guys, it's April and today I wanted to step you through my coloring setup and all of my coloring supplies. So I thought I would give you a broad overview of where I color and then I would go into the fine details of what all everything is. So as you can see right here, this is my coloring area. This is, I'll scoot you down just a little bit so you can see, this is my coloring station. We've got my drafting table, we've got a couple of lights, and then of course my chair, my phone so I can keep up with YouTube and chat and all that kind of stuff when I'm live streaming. And then right next to me on my, when I'm sitting down, it's on my right side, I have all of my markers and my colored pencils. And I cannot tell you how much I love this setup. You can see at the top that I have my colored pencil cases. I will step you through all of the stuff in there when we do a more detailed view, but those are my colored pencils. And then at the top, divided by color, underneath that I have my Faber-Castell pit pens. And then below that, also divided by color, I have all of my Copics. And interspaced throughout some of those Copics, I do have some of the Crayola blender markers, mainly because I find that the blender markers and the Copics seem to work fairly well together. And then moving to the right, the small brown container up top holds all of my Zigs and my Wink of Stella. I believe I have some glitter gel pens in there, but they're slowly dying and I don't use them that often. There's a couple of notebooks right next to that, which hold a couple of different color patterns that I like to remember for maybe future use if I want to do them again. Underneath those notebooks is my currently using utensils. So those are all of the colors that I'm currently using to color the crystals in Geomorphia, which is taking forever, but is quite a lot of fun. So I highly recommend that you join us for the live stream. And then the big white container right below that is a combination of different things, but it's mostly all of my water-based markers. I've mixed all the brands of my water-based markers together and then grouped them by color just because that's how my brain works. There are a few slots in there, however, that are non-water-based markers. So you can see on the middle right side, there is a cubby that is a mixture of different colors. Those are actually alcohol-based markers. Those are cure-colored alcohol markers. I don't have a lot of them. They don't quite blend and move the same way that the Cobics do, which is why I don't have them grouped in there. Plus they are a very odd length, so I will show you that when we get to those. And then right underneath that you have this black and white cubby. Those are all of my white paint gel pens and markers along with all of my black markers and paint pens as well. And then right under that I have all of my Sharpie markers, which once again, while they are alcohol-based markers, they don't really play as well with the blending as I would like, which is why they are on their own little space. So I can use them when I want to, but most of the time I don't gravitate towards those. So now I will give you a close-up view of everything that I have. Okay, first let's look at my pink color pencil set. This holds all of my Fiber Castell Polychromos. As you can see, some of them are pulled out because those are what I'm using. I have marked along the bands the number of each of the color pencils so that I know where they go back into. I finally have a full set of polychromos, which I'm super, super excited about. It took me a while to get all of these together, but now that I have them, I absolutely adore them. So I also have this last sheet right in here. I don't have filled out. Let's see if I can find the, the uh, zipper for it. I don't have anything in it. I'm mainly using it for if I ever get backup colors for the set, then that's where these would go. So that if I'm getting low on one, I can get a couple more and then I can put them in here until that low one is completely used up. So this is my polychromos case. This is my Irigen colored pencil case. So I have a full set of the Irigen colored pencils. I don't use these as much. I mean, I like them for their pastel colors and I use them in combination with my polychromos when I need some lighter shades. But overall, I don't use these as often because they are such a hard colored pencil. But then I also have my gold fabbers in here as well. I wanted to try out the gold fabbers because I love the Faber Castell color line. And I just wanted to see how they played compared to the polychromos. And I do really like these. So if you don't want to buy the polychromos, I do highly recommend these colored pencils. I enjoy them a lot. I tend to use them more when I've got pieces that I don't necessarily want to be as crazy or detailed about because I'm okay with using these up faster than I am the polychromos because these are way cheaper than the polychromos, but they do lay down color just as well. And this, of course, is just a view of my desk if you were looking at it straight on, if you were sitting at the desk. 
I'm going to pan over so that we can get a closer look at all the marker cases. Okay, so now that we're a little closer to the marker case and we've got more of a head-on view, you can see how I like to color code all of my things. The top, we've got the pit pens, which I've got both the big and the little ones. I'll get them out for you real quick. So there are two sizes of pit pens. We've got the big brush, also got the little brush. I have both sizes because sometimes the colors only come in one or the other size. So I wanted all of the colors and then I got both the big and the little of all the colors that I really truly enjoy using. Now these are not alcohol based. These are India ink. So they are permanent ink. They act at the very beginning like a water based ink but then they dry and they don't move. So they can be fun to play with but dangerous at the same time. Then right below all of the India ink I have all of my Copic markers and my Crayola blender markers. Now I have various different body sizes and shapes of the Copic marker that I will show you and then I will show you the Crayola blender marker. This is a Copic original. It's got a very square body shape and traditionally it has a bullet nib on this side and then on this side, it is supposed to have a chisel nib, but I have decided to replace that nib with a brush because I absolutely adore using brush markers. So most of my markers are brush markers. You will find that theme throughout all of this. And then of course, there's everybody's favorite sketch marker on the Copics that has, of course, the brush nib and then the chisel nib. I'm gonna get marker all over my hands doing this. Oh well. And then we have the Copic Chow, which also has a brush nib and a chisel nib. Now, I am not particularly picky when it comes to the body type of marker that I have for the Copics. As you can see, I've got all of them. I usually go for whatever's cheapest because in the end, it's going to be the refills that really give you a lot of value. So the bodies, I will get whatever is on sale. I will replace the nibs as needed. And then as the ink runs out, I get refills and it is glorious and amazing. Now, as I mentioned, I also have some of these Crayola blender markers thrown in there as well. I've actually had a lot of fun using these. I don't know if I'm going to replace them as I use them up, but they have this beautiful brush nib and they blend amazingly. They just don't last very long and they don't have refill ink. So you would have to constantly buy and throw away and replace and I feel like I'm wasting a lot of plastic that way. So let's get a little closer to the stuff at the top here. I have some Wink Estella. They're just glitter brush pens that are really, really fun to use. I haven't used them a whole lot. I'm not a very glittery person, but I have a few of them to try out and play with. I have used them once. Maybe I'll use them more often. I don't know. And then I have these glitter gel pens that I got with my Copic markers when I bought them. Once again, I don't use them a whole lot. They've got almost a brush tip, but not really. It's a fake plastic brush tip. And like I said, I don't use glitter all that often and I find that they dry up before I get the chance to use them. And then last but not least in this little set up here, I have some of these zigs. I don't have a whole ton of them because I don't find myself drawn to them. At one point, I wanted the whole set because the tips of these are really, really fun. They're real brushes, but I'm afraid to use them and use up all of the ink because they're so small. I don't know. Maybe I should try using them more, but I've only got a few. I don't know if I'm ever going to get a full set, but yes, I have a few of these. And then I won't go into too much detail on all of these. These are just what I'm using in my current project that I mentioned before that I'm doing on my live stream. This is where I keep them when I'm not live. And then we have the water-based markers. I have talked about these markers a little bit in the past. I have my full watercolor color sheet notebook thing that I created that I did a video on, so I will link that here so you can see that. I also show each of the individual type of water-based marker that I have. So once again, I won't go through all of that, but as you can see, I have quite a few and I really like them. All of them, pretty much all of them. There may be a small handful that are not brush tip, but most of them are brush tip. And of course, I always stock up when there is a sale on Tombow's or any of the other Stadlers and things like that. So I have a small little hoard that I love so very much. But now we will go down to these three that I was talking about earlier so you can see more in depth of what those are. Okay, so this top right here is the storage area for my Cure Colors. These are long alcohol markers and they are dual ended. And the reason I like these one is because they have a brush tip on one end and then on the other end, 
they have a bullet tip and it's a teeny tiny bullet nib. Let me show you compared to the bullet nib on a Copic. So I've brought back out the Copic original that has that bullet nib on it. And if you can see, let's see if I can do this in a way that you guys can see this. Look at the size difference between those. Yeah, you can get into tight spaces with that Copic bullet nib, but you can get into teeny tiny spaces with this Cure Color, which is why I've started collecting these Cure Colors. They're a little bit more on the expensive side, mainly because they are hard to get a hold of. I've been finding them on Amazon for some change, which is why I've only have a small few of them right now. I'm hoping at some point to amass a small collection of them, but at the same time, I'm not in a huge hurry and I just want them for detail work when my Copics are too big to get into some of those smaller spots. And then, like I said, we have this area right here, which is all of my white. I've got a couple of Faber-Castell kits. I have some jelly rolls. I've also got some Poscas, and then I got some Posca blacks as well. And each of these Poscas are different sizes and they've got different tips. And then I've got this white brush pen that I haven't really got a chance to use yet, as you can tell by the fact that there's still the security band around it. But someday I'm gonna try this out and it's going to be amazing. But yeah, I, I try anything and everything. So this is just my white area. And then I have all of my Sharpies. These are all different brushed tipped Sharpies. As I said, I have a love for brush tips. So I decided that if I wanted Sharpies, they had to be brush tip. So I've got some of these big fat brush tip Sharpie markers. Look at that brush on them. It's absolutely amazing. Put the cap back on. And then I have some of these teeny tiny brush tip Sharpie pens, which are so freaking adorable. I don't know why I find pens adorable, but I do. And then I have over here, these are brush tip stain Sharpie. They're for fabric, but you know, I figure you can use them for paper. I've used them on paper and they work perfectly fine. I don't know. So I have those as well. So that is my small little Sharpie collection. Those are all of my coloring utensils in their storage unit. I got this one, this big one off of Amazon. The smaller marker case I got off of Etsy, but I do not believe the seller is selling them any longer. If they are, I will link it down below. And then the white thing is just a box. It's nothing special. And then the brown thing is something I got at Walmart probably 15 years ago. So you're not going to be able to find that anymore. And the pencil cases are something I got off of Amazon as well. I will link all the information down below for any of the products that I still know about. But if they aren't on the website any longer or I don't remember where they came from, I won't have that listed down below but feel free to ask. And if you have any questions on what I use to color and how I store all of my coloring supplies, just ask me down below in the heart your beautiful faces. Bye.